Welcome in week five. I want to thank everyone who has participated in our survey. And I would like to urge the rest of you to take a minute of your time to answer some questions about who you are and about your motivation to follow our MOOC Introduction to Communication Science. I will present the results in week eight in our MOOC about the MOOC. As you can see in the course outline, we've come to the end of the scripted part of this course. Because this week, week five, is actually the last week I had prepared. If you finish week five, you have heard everything that I set out to discuss with you in this introduction course. There is, of course, much more to say about communication. Uh, next week, therefore, is all about what you want to cover. We have been working day and night on eight new lectures, inspired by your comments on our forum. Next week, we will visit some new topics and revisit a few theories that deserve a bit more exploration. Okay, but what are we going to do this week? Where are we? We have moved from the history of our field to theories that view communication as a one-way process with only one correct meaning, to theories that focus more on message construction and deconstruction. This week I'll talk about the cultural approach that sees communication as a carrier and building block of our social and cultural world. In the last lecture of week four, I had already explained that this cultural approach should be seen in light of the increased focus on recipients and the signification process. It is very typical that Stuart Hall, a front runner of the reception perspective, also studied and put a large emphasis on cultural and social aspects of communication. He explained that cultural proximity affects the transmission of a message. In simple words, people will understand each other better when the different parties are culturally closer to each other. A simple example of this is language, one of many indicators of culture. It is more difficult to understand someone from a different country simply because they speak a different language. And if countries like Britain and the United States share a language, that also tells you something. It tells you they have some sort of cultural link. Hall explained that communication can both identify someone as belonging to a culture, of a group for instance, or show that they do not belong. Also, culture is something that changes all the time and has to be renewed. We have to keep communicating or we will lose touch with our culture. You can imagine if someone hasn't left his house for years, the world will have changed. And our hermit might feel like a cultural outcast because of it. Finally, communication is necessary to make sense of the social world around us. Therefore, when you study recipients and how they give meaning to a message, it makes sense to also study cultural effects. So you can see that this week's perspective is a continuation of last week's. They actually developed and became more prominent at the same time, in the 60s. We will start our exploration there.